merworms, the celestial hurricanum, dwarf juggernauts, galloper guns, chimera rats, and a giant meme cyclops. Whenever I go to Reddit and I see a new model added to Total War Warhammer, I click on it and it's always the same guy. And I thought, you know what? I've got to talk to this guy. So is it Chaos Roby or Chaos Robbie? <laughs> it's Chaos Robbie, yeah. Robbie's my, my actual name. The first conference I ever went to that had a bunch of other Total War guys, everybody introduced themselves as their YouTube handle. And it was just like that scene out of Marvel. I was like, oh, oh, fun. we're using our made up names. Okay, cool. <laughs> Tell us a bit about yourself. How'd you get into modding? Well, I played uh, Warhammer 2 Total War for oh, a couple months, got really into it. Then I found out about the uh, Marienburg landship, the tabletop unit, a really wacky one, sort of. And then, I don't know, I just kind of got obsessed with trying to make it, I guess. And I don't know, just the obsession of trying to do what could, people haven't done uh, that kind of motivated me. And it seems like that's your real specialty, is picking up on these units that people think are basically never going to get made for the game. They're just so obscure and out there, but they're so visually interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, uh, there's a draw there, right? Kind of, chances are we're not, we're never going to get it, so I might as well try to make it, and, you know, I, I don't have to compete with Creative Assembly, right? So a couple examples, like I know just yesterday you released the Kotal unit, which is one even I was like, hmm, this would have been really nice for the uh, Tehinawan DLC. So that was a, a yeah, neat one yeah, to yeah. kind of see thrown in Although there. Although I should say it's pronounced Kowadal, are you sure? Because it's Quetzalcoatl, you're right, my mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah. How do you go about choosing which one you'll do next? Uh, if there's some vanilla assets, I can kind of base it on and you know, tweak like the, uh, the Chimera Rat, which I'm sure you'll get to. That was kind of already in there, just had to massage it a little bit, right? You have the rat ogres, use their heads, the hydra as its body. Just this kind of playing around with the vanilla assets there. The real thing that's been impressive to me personally, because I've done a bit of modding, but not nearly at this level, is it's not easy to just edit a unit and then get it into Total War. This is a very complicated process, is my understanding. Yes, tedious is how I would describe it. Um, we have tools. We have tools created by uh, Phaser, for instance, uh, who can kind of take the vanilla file formats and bring them into something we can actually edit all that. But then you have a less optimal setup in uh, the modeling program we have. Uh, 3ds max is the one i use and it's an outdated version of 3ds max you have to use is that correct you are well aware yes it's an outdated one uh we have to use legacy drivers it crashes quite a bit with those legacy drivers so that can be annoying Get over it real quick though save every 10 seconds and uh yeah then i have to use uh this is kind of a strange thing but i have to use the rome 2 ob program which kind of he packs everything into the file formats that uh, the game can actually read. So it's kind of strange that I have to use the Rome 2 version of that instead of the Warhammer. So does the Attila version work or the Thrones of Britannia one? Oh, uh, uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, Each one of those had a little bit more tweaking. I know they're both based on the Rome 2 engine, so you might, you know, get a little more success with that. Because I've heard Rome 2 was very prone to issues with Bob. <laughs> uh, I should try that, actually. What's the one that you would tell people to check out with, uh, check out first of your mods? Oh, I brought it up before, but the land ship, it's my baby. I gotta say, the one that really got me the first time was the Merworms mod, because especially when I finished the uh, Curse of the Vampire Coast DLC, I was a bit disappointed that, you know, you defeat this giant Merworm model and it never comes back up again, but you actually made it playable in-game. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Some animation issues and all of that, but uh, yeah, it's good, and kind of adding the uh, Aminar undead mount was kind of... Uh, I didn't, I didn't really think of that at the very beginning when I was doing it, and then halfway through I'm like, huh, you know, it would be kind of a cool easter egg to make it an actual reward for the campaign. It's a very uh, cool cherry on top. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so I noticed in one of your mods you said that there are some tweaks to animations coming up in the future, like you guys are hoping to start messing with the animations a bit more. Ah, uh, well read, my friend. Okay, yes, yeah, so there's a... Uh, guy who's doing uh, RPFM, he's found a way to edit animation fragments, which I thought 
were kind of just in there to give pointers, kind of telling you what an animation does and all of that. He's found a way to actually edit them, allow compatibility between mods with it. That'll be really exciting, allowing kind of new animation sets to be created. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can be done with that. Yeah, I noticed you said that specifically on the new uh, Oathstone, uh, Oathstone and Shieldbearers for Dwarfs mod. Uh, because some people were saying, oh, you know, they don't have attack animations. But I thought that's a really cool possibility for the future you have there. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I really, that's the thing that I was most impressed by is, you know, your mods are filling in those tiny gaps. You know, those tiny little things, like, it doesn't really change the way the game plays intrinsically, but it's a neat little cool thing to make sure to put in. Uh, are there any other ones you're looking to specifically bring in in the future? Am I looking to bring in, let's see, I have the sky cutter on the table. There's uh, some animation work I have to do with that. And uh, that's that's the high elf uh, sky cutter, which is kind of the flying boat thing pulled by a uh, eagle. <laughs> which a lot uh, of people uh, were thought sure. would make it in the last DLC. Oh, I, I honestly thought so too. That's why I kind of held off on it because I'm like, oh, high elf DLC coming up. I have the sky cutter. Don't want to compete. And when it wasn't in the trailer or anything like that, I'm like, huh? I get on that. There's a secret project I have been working on. I think a few people know about it. The uh, Gorgon, am I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's the beast men, four-armed, minotaur-looking thing. There's been a model that's been shown off over the past year or so, and I've actually managed to contact that artist, and uh, he's allowed me to use it and try to get it into the game. So that's, that's kind of another uh, in-progress work. And All if right. people really like your work and they want to, like, you know, show some support, how can they go back doing that? Uh, well, comments are nice. I like hearing good feedback and all of that. I know in the Aquadal model I released earlier this week, uh, someone said, oh, the, the coloring could be a little bit better to blend the wings in with the uh, body. So I, I listened to that feedback. That's pretty good. Uh, I have a Patreon, which is more of a tip chart than anything else. So if you like what I'm doing, give me some beer money. <laughs> it can't be overstated how nice it is to get that five bucks. I'm like, I'm going to buy a beer with that. <laughs> Uh, it's much appreciated. Any predictions for game three races? Uh, I think I'm going to go a bit boring and say just Chaos Dwarves, Kislev, Ogre Kingdoms, and wait, what's the fourth one? Daemons? Uh, maybe, but I, I'm going to say no no cafe, no end, nothing, nothing fancy, unfortunately. Spoken like someone who's had to spend a lot of time creating those models. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and I've heard people ask you that several times. Have you? Do you have any plans to maybe try and sit down and implement your own race at some point? That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? That's that's kind of why I'm hoping that there won't be Cathay or anything like that. You know, that leaves a lot of open open space for modders to come in and kind of fill it out. Kind of cool to talk to someone who's really completely changing the modding scene and how it looks right now for Warhammer. But now you're bringing in entirely new creations and it's opened up a lot of possibilities for people. So yeah, thanks for your work, man. And I hope uh, to see more of your work in the weeks and years to come. It's been good talking. I'll leave a link to Chaos Robbie's mods in the description below. And if you play Warhammer, you owe it to yourself to check them out. So thanks for watching. And if you have other mods or mod artists you'd like me to feature on this channel, recommend them below. It's a part of the Total War community I really believe in, and I'd love to highlight more of their exciting creations.